Hi, I'm Mark McElroy. This is 60 Seconds to Rome, a Romework application session. Now, if you love our 60 second concept videos, well, don't worry, they'll be coming right back next week. But once every five or six concept based episodes, we stop to do a little Romework so we can explore how you can make Rome work better for you. And in these, we'll just be applying the concepts that we've talked about up to this point. So if you've been with us through the first concepts, you'll know everything you need to know to get started to create the things we're going to create together today. So join us next week to resume our regularly scheduled programming. But for now, let's pause for a Romework application session. First, just a quick word about why I'm even doing this. I wanted to mention just how much Rome research has meant to me, and I'm very grateful to the creators of that software because really for the first time I feel like I have a rich collaborative partner, uh, a tool that's capable not just of receiving my notes, but sorting them and juggling them and surfacing them in ways that help make me personally more creative. It's even changing the way I think about the way ideas should be linked together, and for someone of my vast advanced age, that's kind of exciting. I also want to thank you for the time you've invested in watching the earlier episodes and watching this one. The hours of our lives are a limited commodity, and the fact that you would spend this hour with me means a great deal. I take that investment of your time and effort very seriously, and I want to be sure that with every episode, including this one, you get something back in return for that investment that you can put to work to make your life better. And finally, whatever I talk about today is just my opinion, one way that these things could be done. There are a lot of ways to work in Rome. So keep that in mind. I'm not a guru. I don't have all the answers. Today I'm offering some very simple applications that even total beginners can use. There are fancier ways to get it done, but these are basics and they'll work until you grow and feel more confident in Rome. So today we're going to be talking about some of the concepts we've studied so far. These include intentions, pages, links, the graph, blocks, and templates. Uh, those are the applications we've covered in the first six episodes of this series, and these are the only applications you'll need to know anything about in order to work well and comfortably today. We'll be using these concepts to build three interesting things that you could put to work in your daily life. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about using Rome for journal entries and some ways that you can use templates to make that easier and faster. We'll be talking a bit about um, what I call an intake form. And an intake form is basically what I use to capture notes on the books I read, the videos I watch, uh, the movies I've seen lately, any kind of media that you absorb you could use an intake form to take good notes about that form. And then finally, we'll also look at something I call life lists. I keep a series of running lists, uh, things I plan to read, things I plan to watch, things I want to listen to, uh, even things I plan to eat and drink. And I now keep all those in Rome Research because it's so easy in a journal entry on a random page to say, here's something I want to do, and to have Rome capture, collect, and organize that for me. So that later on, I don't have to sit down and say, I feel like writing, but I just don't have any ideas. Uh, Rome has a running list of things to write. I can just check that, get inspiration, and off I go. So with that done, let's go out to the Daily Notes page. This is a Rome database that I've created, and other than some planning I've done for today's session, it is about as empty as can be, just like if it were your very first day with Rome. And here we are on the Daily page to talk about our first application, journaling. Now listen, there's nothing stopping you from using the daily page just as your journal. And every day you could get up first thing in the morning or whenever you like to write, open your laptop or call it up on your Mac or PC. And in your web browser, you could just start writing the things that are on your mind. Today, I think I'll start working on the application sessions. Uh, you might mention some of the things about uh, your mood and say, um, I'm in a really great mood because I'm thinking about how many people this will help. And you could do this kind of thing. You can go back and correct your typos as I'm going to do here. Uh, Rome makes it quick and easy to enter and edit that text. And frankly, if you did nothing else, if this were your means of journaling, just cranking out what's on um, your mind and capturing there on the daily page, you'd be off to a good start with journals. 
But if you have done any research at all on people keeping journals online, if in fact you've maybe seen some of Tracy Winchell's work on Roman journaling, you know that it can be a little more complex and a lot more functional for you. Um, Tracy, by the way, is an excellent expert when it comes to helping people explore the Roman journals process. So I hope that you will check out her website and look at her materials on Roman journaling. It's a great way to kickstart your work there. Today we're going to work on something very simple though, and that is how we might make our, our, our journal in Rome be just a little bit nicer than the bullet points you see here. So with that in mind, let's think about the kinds of things we might want to capture every day. For some people, it's a little intimidating to drop into a completely blank daily page. And if that's you, then we have some things that could help. First, think about the way you would like for your daily page to look each day. And let's just start drawing a picture. I'll tell you how mine kind of looks. I usually have two times a day that I journal. I start in the mornings, and so I might have a section here I call my journal. Organized under that might be morning session and evening session. And in the mornings, because I'm tracking my weight and thinking about my weight, hopefully as this series continues, I'll be getting thinner and you'll be getting smarter. But at any rate, under morning session, I go in and usually I have an entry about my weight because that's just one way that I log it during the day. Um, and then I usually just have a very simple prompt like, what's on your mind? And I use Rome to capture that. Uh, because I'm going to later come back and use this as a template, I'm going to give myself a little room to write there. The, the empty line is kind of an invitation to get started. And for my evening session, I just ask something like, what happened today? So that's a very basic format you could use to capture a journal entry each day. And so maybe you'd want that to show up each morning as you get started, but you don't want to necessarily have to retype it and recreate it over and over again. Well, again, Rome makes that easy. Once you have it about the way you want it, you could just take it and copy it. And first I'll show you what I used to do when I first started using Rome. Don't do this. Um, I would go in and I created me a new page called a journal entry template. And on that template, I would put in the information I wanted to use as a template. And I would add a star to make this a favorite page or a shortcut. You can see now it appears over here in the shortcuts bar on the far left. And in the mornings when I got up, I would click over into my journal entry template. I would dutifully copy that. I would go to daily notes, which of course would be blank when you arrived, and paste it in. And you know, you can work that way. And it's okay. Rome actually makes it easier. And here's where templates can come in uh, and be a great help to you. If you wanted to create a template that would work this way, it could be this easy. Um, you could come in and say, um, journal entry, maybe is the name of the template. Then hitting the slash key, type in um, template. And there you go. Rome inserts the code that you need to make this a templated entry. So press enter, tab over one time to keep everything organized beneath the journal entry template line. And then just put in, um, in this case, I'll just paste in what we've created before. And so now Rome has an idea that this is something called a journal entry. Uh, it has the structure that we want embedded beneath it. And real magic begins at this point. Now, I can put this anywhere I want to put it, but let me show you what it does first. Uh, and to make it more dramatic, let me just go to a blank page. So here we are on a blank page. Uh, this would be just like your daily page if you first opened it up in the morning. And by typing two semicolons, Rome offers me up a list of the templates I've created so far. In this case, I can just choose journal entry. And when I do, bam, there is my template that I just created. And the nice thing about this, it's very easy to trigger. It takes no time at all. It's faster than copy and paste. It is certainly faster than typing it yourself. So with this in place now, I'm free to just fill it out as I like. Oh, revealing personal information here. Uh, what's on my mind? Again, this is where you can just take notes about your day. Uh, I'm about ready for lunch. Uh, and then later in the day, I could come back and under this evening session and what happened today, I could just put in a few notes uh, about the things that went on. Um, I created a nice application session video. 
I saw a good friend for wine and cheese in the afternoon, and uh, I solved all the world's problems. So a great little journal entry that you'd have there created with your own um, Rome research template. So let me urge you to get started with this now. Go ahead and create a nice template for yourself to use uh, so that when you get ready to work on your journals in the morning, you have something good to prompt yourself with. Uh, you could easily include in your template uh, some kind of writing prompt. And then if over time you want to change that prompt, it's this easy. Let's go back to where we created this particular template. I'll close this to just keep it out of our way. Let's say that maybe in addition to tracking weight, you wanted to ask each morning, what's something I'm grateful for? That's a nice way to bring gratitude practice into your day. And then you could just maybe leave an open bullet there. It becomes part of the template. And then you could write about something that you're grateful for that day as a way to keep gratitude front and center in your life. Um, a little trick that I've done that I've added to my evening sessions is something I call the daily score. Really simple way to sort of track my engagement with a day on a scale from one to 10, where one is where and 10 is all right. Uh, I give every day I live a score. And the fascinating thing then is later to go back and look at how these scores fluctuate over time. Uh, today, so far, it's been an eight. Pretty good. So. With these things done, I'll show you just a few more tricks you can do to make your journal entry template even more valuable to you. You could make daily score a sort of a page of its own. Let's show you how I'll do that. I'll highlight the daily score prompt and I'll press double square brackets. I'll do that twice, the square bracket key twice, and that's going to make that into a page. When I click away, you'll see now that that's a link. When I visit the daily score page, You'll see I see a date and one of my daily scores. And that's because on March 5th, we entered a daily score of eight. Over time, this list of linked references will grow. And at a glance, you can sort of see your biorhythm, your engagement with your day, and how it fluctuated over time. There are more complicated ways we could track that, but this simple visual has meant a lot to me. And it's helped me sort of see a pattern in my days. Whenever I interact with people, whenever I give things away, whenever I have time to meditate, whenever I eat the way I should, those scores are higher. And over time, you can use this kind of information to adjust the way you live so that you, you feel better about life. And that's just one of the great ways that Rome can help you. So let's go back here. I don't want a score to always be uh, pre-plugged in to my, my template, but now you see we've made these changes. Uh, once you make these changes, they're good to go. So again, now when I trigger the template, you'll see the difference. Oh, journal entry is ready for me after typing two semicolons. And there's you know the new version with the changes I've just made. When you change your template, it will affect all entries you make with it going forward, but not those going back. Don't fret over that too much. Life's all about change, and over time, your journal is best for you if you are altering it to give you the information you need when you start looking back over entries. Rome's going to make that easy to do, too. The only other tip I'd give you about journaling before we move on is to say that when I'm journaling, I like to link early and often. So uh, a lot of times as I'm typing things out uh, in a journal entry, I will, I will just link them as I go. And I'll give you an example here. Let's go to a fresh page to do that. Like page two. Let's pretend I'm journaling. Bam, that fast. My template opens up for me. And under something I'm grateful for, maybe I say, I really loved the book 1Q84 that I read last week. You can always go in and begin to make links in the things that you're typing as part of your journal entry. And as you're doing that, you're starting to link concepts together in Rome in general. Uh, you remember our, our series um, episode that talked about the graph. Well, this is you adding to your graph every time you create a link. So I might also go in and say, uh, I am interested in seeing the movie uh, Clash of the Titans. I don't know why that one came to mind, just did. Ancient 1980s, Harry Hamlin of all people, and everyone born in this millennia says, who? But at any rate, I'm interested in seeing this movie, so I could put in that movie and link it. And when I go and look at my graph of this particular page, you're gonna see something interesting. You know, here's blank page two. 
There's a daily score link there where things are linked. This is the first time I've mentioned 1Q84. This is the first time I've mentioned Clash of the Titans. Later, I could put in information about these movies, like if I click here and go to the page, Clash of the Titans. Rome finds it for me. And I might say, this movie wasn't as great as I thought it would be. So with that done, then later on, I'll have notes about Clash of the Titans. It'll be easy to find, and I can always trace it right back to the journal entry where I first talked about that. So if you link as you write, this is the whole point. If you link as you write, you'll begin to build this kind of universe of knowledge and information uh, that Rome will show you over time. Uh, here's the big overview, and you can see where I've been adding some pages as I've planned today's work, but you can also see that little things are happening, links are beginning, the daily score is mentioned in a couple of places, uh, and this is how Rome will slowly build a constellation of ideas for you. Um, I can view this also in an alternative layout. I just right-click to review um, or to produce this menu. Views close layout puts all these in a little constellation, and you can sort of see how Here's some ideas clustered around today's journal entry I made on that blank page. Here's a cluster of things around a fake journal entry I was working on earlier. And I've got some things that just aren't linked to anything at all. And for now, that's okay. So now let's move on and let's talk about the second thing that we're going to make together today, and that's an intake form. Now, that's a funny word that I use for um, a form I use to record anything about the media I consume. When I first started working in Rome, I had an intake form for every single kind of media. I had a book template, and I had a, a, a video template, and I had a podcast template. Lots of templates because I just love complexity. But I got over myself after several months of using Rome and uh, decided that I would just have one intake form to rule them all. And I created a template for it that I'll share with you now uh, uh, with the caveat that this is how I do it. It doesn't have to be how you do it, but maybe this will give you some good ideas. So here's my intake form template. I've set it up as a template in Rome using the tricks we've just talked about. I call it an intake form, and I can invoke it anywhere within my Rome graph with just a couple of semicolons and choosing the word intake form. Uh, this is a form I can use with any kind of media, whether it's a book or a video or a podcast, it doesn't matter. I can capture then the title, the author, and put in some informational tags. I have a place to embed the media itself or any kind of quotes from it. I have a section I call literature notes, and this gets into note-taking theory, which is outside the scope of this video. But that's where I sort of take one to two line notes, heavily hashtagged, listing the main ideas or the big ideas that I've come across as I, as I get into a piece of media like a book or a video. Fleeting notes are just the kinds of things that occur to me as I'm reading or watching a video or listening to a podcast. I jot those there as they occur to me, trying always to put the information in my own words. And then later, I'll use those fleeting notes to go back up and create literature notes that sort of summarize ideas and link them together. I've also got a section I've created for connections and associations. Um, that area is where um, perhaps I'm reading a book and it reminds me of another one or listening to a podcast that raises an idea I've heard elsewhere. Then I would write about those connections and associations in that section. And then finally, also critiques. A lot of times I'm thinking, how could this have been 10% better? And I might put some notes there about ways I could have improved this uh, so that I can learn from that and think about ways that I might make something later on that might be um, even more helpful to other people than this source material had been. So it's with those ideas in mind then that I work with my intake form. And again, it's so easy to do. Let's go back over to the daily notes page. I'm gonna collapse some of these other things so we can focus on this work. Of course, when I type my two semicolons, now I can choose from my journal entry or my intake form. One click and there's everything I need to make a nice entry. This is gonna be a reference note and for a title, I don't know, today let's use maybe, since we talked about journals earlier, um, we'll call on an episode from Tracy Winchell's uh, Roman Journals conversation that she's had. I think she calls that series Inside Roman Journals. And there was an episode where she talked to me, we'll call that, I think she called it actually Inside Mark McElroy's Journal. The author is Tracy Winchell, and because she's someone that I plan to be studying with and thinking about a lot, 
I'll go ahead and make her a link so that will automatically create a page dedicated to her where I could put information about her or see that information gathered together later on. Mark McElroy is an author I know a little about. I'll go ahead and make him a page as well. And uh, now I can add tags to this just so I can begin to build associations uh, among the different kinds of information in my database. So here I'll call this, I'll make sure that I note that this was um, about Rome research. I will make sure that I note that this was a YouTube video. And because it's a video, this is just a little something I do. You don't have to do it. I get a big kick out of emojis. So I'm just going to put in a little emoji based tag that it was a video that I watched. And later, you know, I could go to this page and I could see a list of all the videos I've watched so far. Uh, notice as I'm typing and I'm creating what I'm calling keywords, you know from watching some of our earlier videos that this hashtag with the double square brackets, it just creates a link. The hashtag makes it stand out and feel like a tag to me, so I include it. It's not necessary. You wouldn't have to do it. You could do it without that. I just like the way it looks when I click away, the way these are grayed out, the way they appear here. It just It's something I like, so I do it that way. You can do it your way. I have a little space where I can embed media or quoted material. I like to have a special section where things are quoted so that I can avoid plagiarism later on. I like to always make my notes be uh, in my own words so I can easily integrate them into things that I might write in the future. In this case, I happen to know where this video uh, that Tracy created is stored on YouTube. I've got that link. So it's very easy. Rome makes it easy for me to keep that right here. In fact, if I just type a slash and say video or embed video, and then paste in the link to the YouTube. Then right there, it's embedded. It's right where I'll want it to be when I go back to look at it in the future. Very easy to go in and play um, elements of that conversation if I want to review them. Also easy to have it playing right there while I take notes about it, which is kind of cool. So now we go on down to uh, the kind of notes that I take. There's a section here for literature notes and a section for fleeting notes. And to tell you the truth, I take my fleeting notes first. So maybe I'm listening to the conversation between myself and Tracy. And as I do, I, I'm hearing things that I like and I just note them down. Um, one note that I would take is Mark needs to learn more about lighting because I was kind of dark in that video. Uh, another fleeting note that might occur to me is um, Tracy and I both value uh, having our journal entries to refer back to and learn from. We both see them as catalysts for change and for positivity in our lives. And so as I'm watching that video, I might make a note about that. So this is my section then where I capture fleeting notes. And frankly, I do that first. Rapid, quick things in my own words. Sometimes if I hear a phrase or something I really like, I'll capture it and rephrase it and put it here. So this is my way of sort of capturing information as I go. With that done and the video watching finished, I come back up and I take what I call literature notes. And you can see I've got little prompts here for myself. Make this a one to two line note with hashtags. So I'm doing that to encourage consistency across note taking. You wouldn't have to do it that way if you didn't want to. In this case, what I'll do is maybe as a, a, a literature note that's a little bit more mature than the fleeting note, I would say journal entries make excellent source material for those who wish to live an examined life. Uh, slices of experience that we can learn and grow from by reviewing them over time. That's a nice solid note and it is uh, actually it's a pretty good distillation of the way that um, Tracy and I talk together. Uh, I might also make a note like this one. Um, dream journals are a fine way to look at how themes and ideas and symbols are at work in your subconscious over time. Another topic that Tracy and I talked about and uh, that I might take a note on, and this might become something I want to write about later. So I'll go ahead and make Dream Journals a link, so it'll have a page of its own. Might remind me later on to go back and connect some things to that. 
Journal entries is something I talk about a lot. I'll link that. I'm somebody that says link early and often because I want my graph to grow with interesting connections over time. So, oh, the subconscious might be something to link to as well. Um, if I want to, I go back up into my main literature notes uh, header and I sort of summarize what's there. This is another way to sort of put in structure or make connections. Both of these are about uh, source material for your life. And so with that in mind, the journal entry, the dream journal statement, I'll just say that um, capturing anything, daily events or nightly dreams, uh, creates a pattern of thoughtfulness in your life that can help you grow and recover. So now I've got me a, a literature note there that uh, sort of summarizes each of the primary literature notes I took. I could collapse that down and see just this and kind of have a gist uh, of all the literature notes I took. I can collapse my fleeting notes in the same way. And if I wanted to, I could do a summary statement for all my fleeting notes there as well. In this case, they're not really related. So one summary statement doesn't work. That being the case, I just wipe out the little prompt because in this case, it didn't apply. With that done, I'm free to list associations and connections, places, uh, other kinds of media that I've been exposed to that I think relate to this in some way. So that would be a good place to do that. Um, and in this case, nothing necessarily comes to mind. Although I might say, uh, for example, see um, Tracy's tweets about Roman journaling at at. Tracy Places, and that might remind me to go to Twitter at some point and look up what she said about these things. Critiques is where I put something that might make an experience about 10% better. Uh, mark by a ring light, for goodness sake. <laughs> and I did, and now things are better. So. This is a nice way to have um, consistent intake of material and over time your collection grows. When you look at your graph, you can see how, wow, just since we've started today's session, the graph is really expanding and growing. Uh, you can see how uh, there's, there's things about the intake form template here. There's the journal entry here, today's date, a lot of things going on. Uh, you see topics beginning to form. Tracy Winchell is there, I'm there. Dream journals is a topic now that we could expand and work on. Slowly, 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 our graph is growing and maturing, and we're seeing this constellation of ideas begin to appear. It's kind of exciting. The last quick thing we'll touch on today, because I'm, I'm aware of your time and the investment you're making, is this. Uh, I like to keep little lists, what I call life lists, inside Rome. They're very easy to create and collect. Let's say that one day in the course of creating a journal entry, I might mention something along the lines of uh, a movie that I'd like to see or, or a show I'd like to watch. I would like to watch the series Queen's Gambit. And then I might just come in and make this into a link to watch. So the next time I mention something that I would like to watch, I would like to watch an episode of The Mandalorian. So now I have these two things that I've tagged as to watch. And if I go to this page, which has been created for me automatically by Rome, this becomes my sort of to watch list. And I can see references, in this case sorted by date, of all the things I said I'd like to watch. And it becomes a kind of a reminder. Um, if I like, I could dress this list up a little bit. I'll go up here in the title. You know I like emoji, so I might come up here and add the little symbol of the movie camera to hint that this is something that I want to watch. Nicely, Rome updates all the incoming links. So this becomes my to watch list. And later you say, do I want to type that emoji every time I have something to watch? I don't have to because Rome is smarter than that. When I say I would like to watch and see it suggests to me, the page name, just like that. So I don't have to type the emoji every time. Uh, I would like to watch um, the series for all mankind. 
Now when I go back to my to watch page, I have reminders about all those things that I wanted to watch and see. And later, if I do watch for all mankind, I could come here and if I liked, I could create an intake form where I could put all my notes about my uh, conceptions and ideas I had while I watched for all mankind. So over time, this becomes a nice little um, thing for me to work with and track things in. If it becomes important to me, I could just click the star here and add it to my shortcuts and then have my list of things to watch quick and easy at hand whenever I wanted it. I keep lists like this, like I said earlier, for things I want to listen to, things I want to eat, things I want to drink. Uh, I even have a to travel list for places I want to go. Rome helps me keep all that organized and in one place. So just some ideas for you as you begin to expand your graph. If you have questions about any of the material we've covered today, I would be delighted to hear from you. Just drop those questions in the comments. I read every single one of them and I will reply to you as you post questions there. Thanks so much for this investment of your time and energy today. I hope this gives you just a few ideas for how you can make Rome more useful to you. Later, we may come back and look at more um, advanced or complicated ways to do some of the things we've talked about today. But for now, these basics are something anyone can put to work, even if they're a total beginner in Rome. Spend some time thinking about how you could adapt these to work for you. I'm Mark McElroy. This is 60 Seconds to Rome. Thank you.